That was possibly the most complicated introduction today, because as you'll see, I do one, two, three, or four different things, and you were almost spot on, almost spot on. Okay. So, the modern world we live in is a hugely competitive one. And if you think about when you sit watching the TV at night, there is huge competition for your time and attention. And what this means is we need to think innovatively in business and in careers. And my name is Simon Gray, and in the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about some of my experience over the last 15 years in business and in the careers and employability space to help you if you're looking for a job or to help you in business to get ahead of the competition. Now, we're in a very, very big room today. Very big room. And I like to make the room bigger, always bigger. So I have a Twitter handle. I'm afraid I'm a Twitterholic. So if you have a question, if you have a comment or an observation, if you would like to follow me on Twitter and message me, if we don't have time for Q&A at the end, what I'll do after the event today is I'll get back to you individually and personally. Just makes the event bigger, uh, bigger and better. And also tag LBEM15 as well. So, a bit of background, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes on my background because it kind of explains as to, as to where I am, what I'm doing, and, and some of the messages I'm going to deliver to you today. So I trained as a chartered accountant, qualified back in 2000, and I was never the best accountant, and I didn't really enjoy it. Fantastic profession, but it just wasn't for me. So I went in search of something else, and this is a common theme throughout my experience. And I fell into recruitment, and I fell into recruitment because I went to a recruitment company and said, help, get me out of accountancy, get me into something else. And they said to me, well, Simon, you seem like you could sell some stuff. I think they said ice to the Eskimos, and um, they gave me a job. Didn't really know what I was getting into. So I was kind of attracted by the, the nice salary and also the promise of some really, really big bonuses. And for a while, that was true. What happened, though, is that recruitment can take its toll on you. The long hours, the constant rejection from calling clients that don't want to speak to you. And I started to learn, I started to look for something else. And I read a book called Angry White Pajamas by a guy called Robert Twigger. Robert Twigger was a, a poet, he's a British poet, a uh, kind of academic who went to Japan in search of himself. And he enrolled in Tokyo on a course called the Senshusei course which is an 11-month Aikido boot camp. Now, for those of you who don't know, Aikido is a martial art. It's one of the, the, the four principal martial arts in Japan. And without any knowledge of Aikido, he enrolled on this course and spent 11 months training with the Tokyo riot police. You can probably guess what happened next. I read the book and thought, I need to go. So I did. So I resigned from my recruitment company. I got on a plane, went to Japan, never been there before in my life turned up in Tokyo, couldn't speak the language, and enrolled on this course. And this is me, third from, fourth from left at the top, having completed the course. This is possibly the biggest life experience I've ever had, because you're thrown together with a collection of people that you don't know from all around the world. You're training with the Tokyo riot police every single day, and it was a quite brutal and daunting experience. But doing this and sticking to the plan and turning up every day, I got to the end of it, and while I was on it, I couldn't wait to finish, but looking back, it taught me lots of stuff I need to know about success in the job market and also success in business. Problem with living in Japan, it's quite expensive, so I needed to earn some money. So I came back to England, came back to England, and, and going back to what I knew, I decided I'd get back into recruitment. So I decided I'd start my own recruitment company. So I did, with two colleagues. And we started this business in September 2008. And there's an important distinction here because we started right at the start of September 2008. Now, can anyone remember what happened? 2008, September, financial crisis. Absolutely. Everything tumbled. And we were sat there. We were committed. We had to run this business. We'd given up our jobs. But not deterred. We plowed on. We kept going. And we were determined. And we made it a success. And that business is still going strong today. And that was about applying ourselves and believing that we had the ambition and the skills necessary to do the job, which we did. Because in, uh, in the recession, the first thing people do in business is put a sign above the door that says recruitment freeze. And candidates who would normally move in the job market think, I'm better here, it's safer here. 
So then Mark Carney came to town in August 2013. Mark Carney, the new governor of the Bank of England. And because I ran a, a recruitment company, and because uh, I ran an SME business as well, because the employment rate was linked to the interest rate, and it was all this new forward guidance stuff, um, I was asked to comment. I was asked to comment for the local media. And in the space of a week, I, I had basically through my office, I had the Financial Times World, I had Wall Street Journal, I had BBC National News at 10, I had uh, the ITV News, uh, all of these people paraded through my office to ask me my opinion on what Mark Carney was going to say and what it meant to the business community. And for the first time in my life, I stopped thinking about my small little business. I looked above the parapet and saw a big wide world out there. And I had that itchy feeling again where I thought, it's time to do something different. So I did. I did. And I left my recruitment company. And I'm a published author, which I'll talk about in, uh, in, in a few short moments. Left my recruitment company and I set up three businesses. Uh, and I now have a portfolio career at the age of 42. It's actually 43 because it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. And it really hit me that I've, uh, I've kind of achieved something that people don't normally achieve until they retire. Uh, and I was talking to somebody recently and I said to this guy, well, what do you want to do when you retire? And he said, well, probably when I'm 60, 65, I quite like this portfolio career thing. And I thought, well, I've actually engineered that. And there was a plan in place to engineer that. Because I believe you can do whatever it is you want to do at whatever point in life. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the three most important things to find success in the job market or in business. And they are observation, innovation, and action. So first off, first off observation. Many people only see what's in front of them. And by only knowing what we know and never looking outside of ourselves, we often miss a multitude of opportunities. And I experience this all the time with the, the people I advise in the job market. The job was right there. They just didn't think in the right way or take the right action to get it. Innovation. In business, if you do what everyone else is doing, you compete simply on price. And at some point, that means that profitability is going to be eroded. It's only a matter of time. So you need to, you need to innovate consistently. And you need to innovate consistently because people will catch up with you. And finally, action. You know, action is hugely important. Until we decide to take action, then nothing can ever happen. And uh, those of you who've read books or seen films on the Vikings will know that when the Vikings went to conquer a new territory, they landed on the beach and they burnt their boats. And I really love this analogy because until you're 100% 100, 100 committed, you can always backtrack. So my challenge is, whatever you decide to do in life, burn your boats. And that's what I've consistently done. And I'm still here to tell the tale. So let's talk about observation. Many people in life, whether it be in business or careers, like to follow the herd. And if you think about following the herd, a bit like sheep, it's quite a safe place to be because you're all huddled in, no one sees you, you don't put yourself out there, and it's quite a safe place to be. But thinking about the job market, following the herd is not really a very good idea because most people in the job market will emphasize their CV, they spend a lot of time on their CV perfecting it, and there is actually no such thing as a perfect CV. They then put their CV on job boards or position them with professional recruiters. The problem is, success in the job market is about standing out from the competition. And if you do what everyone else is doing, well, that can never really be standing out, can it? So whether it be in the job market or whether it be in business, my ethos is to say, well, don't do what everyone else is doing. Instead, jump ship and find another ship that nobody else is on. So while most people are on the ship on the right, if you jump onto the smaller ship, well, you've got a better chance of standing out and doing something great. And actually, you're far nimbler to be able to do that. And I'm going to give you a real-life example of, of, of how jumping ship can really help and thinking differently. So when I ran my recruitment company, I started my recruitment business. We're a small SME business, and our competition are huge national players with massive advertising budgets. And I was at home one day, lying in bed, very early in the morning, and I heard, uh, I think it was BBC Radio Nottingham, and there was a guy on the radio talking about recruitment, talking about CVs, and talking about interview technique. And I thought, hang on a minute, why is, the, why is this guy on the radio, why am I not on the radio? So I took some action, 
and I phoned up the radio station. And I followed up with an email and said, if you need someone to come in and talk about anything to do with the job market, I'm your guy. You had the guy in this morning. Yeah, he was good, but I'll come in and do it as well. And three days later, I was on the radio. Scary experience first time, if you've never done it. Scary experience, but a good experience. Because I did the job first, and I did a decent job, I got asked back, I got asked back, and this started to, this started to roller coaster. So I was on the BBC News, I was on the radio, I was in the local press, then it started to be national press, and all of this cost me nothing, it cost me time. And what it did in our business, it positioned us on a different ship in a different place to everybody else. We were nimbler, so the radio would phone me up and say, do you want to come on this morning? Yeah, no problem, I'll come on. So we positioned ourselves in a completely different place as a thought leader in the recruitment industry. And our competition, the big boys, couldn't compete on that playing field. Anyone know who this guy is? Bill Gates, yeah. Big fan of Bill Gates. Fantastic business person. One of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world and one of the richest guys in the world. Now, Bill Gates founded, uh, founded Microsoft. And I've read, a few, I've read a few books about Bill Gates, read a few articles about Bill Gates. And I'm a big believer that when you read something or when you hear some, someone speak, if you can take one nugget away and use that in your life, it's a pretty powerful experience. So I read this article about Bill Gates. And what Bill Gates does when he goes on holiday, yes, he lies by the pool. He's in his five-star, six-star hotel. But the other thing he does, he goes to the library or he goes on Amazon before he goes. And he used to buy books on stuff he knew nothing about. Books on physics, books on wildlife, whatever, it doesn't matter. And he used to read these books to get inspiration for his own business. Because there is a common theme, I believe, in business and in life, and that is an idea over here can actually be applied over here. But until you can get out of your head and out of your own comfort zone of your own business and sector, sometimes you don't always see it. So I talk Bill Gates at his word, and when I go on holiday now, I read books about all sorts of random stuff. A lot of that stuff now transpires into my own business to generate new ideas and new innovative products. So let's move on to the second thing that's needed for success in the job market or in business, innovation. What we can do in our businesses or in the job market is sit in our own little cocoon. And in particular in business, we might make assumptions about what our clients might need, what they're going to buy from us, and sometimes these can be the wrong assumptions. And also thinking about how we innovate products for our clients, well, it's quite diff difficult sometimes to guess what they might need today, tomorrow, or next week. One of the best ways to do it is to step into their shoes for a day or an afternoon. So you go and sit with your client, you see what challenges they have, what needs they have, what unmet needs they have, and you make notes, and then you position products that are relevant to them. And a great example of this is Apple, because I'm pretty sure nobody, nobody rolled into Steve Jobs' office and said, do you know what, Steve? What I could really do with is this little tablet with these little things called apps on them, and if you could make that for me, I'd buy it. Didn't happen like that. What Apple realized was that people were working increasingly mobile, and they positioned a product that met that unmet need in the market. I look what happened since. Everybody's making tablets. Everybody's making mobile devices. Going back to my recruitment business. So in my recruitment business, and very brief overview as to how recruitment works. Client phones me up, gives me a job. I provide them with a short list. They hire one of my candidates and they pay me a fee. That's generally how it works. Uh, that's recruitment 101 in about two, two seconds. So, Thinking back to what I said earlier about the big, the big players, the big competition, I thought, well, how can we do things differently? If we focus on the client, everyone else is focusing on the client. Why don't we focus on the candidate? And those of you who run your own businesses, yeah, you'll be employers. You may need to go out and recruit. But at some point, you might need a job yourself. And it occurred to me one day, I was trying to get hold of this client. His name was Mike. I'm trying to get hold of this client. He wouldn't return my call. And I wanted, him to talk, I wanted to talk to him about some recruitment business. So I phoned him about a job that I had. He wouldn't re return my call for the, for the business, but he phoned me straight back because what's in it for him was a, was a job that appealed to him. So I decided to write a book. And I wrote this book called Super Secrets of the Successful Job Seeker, which is quite a mouthful. And I wrote this book and I positioned it to our candidates. And I said, 
We've written a book. We're experts. We're thought leaders in the recruitment space. This book will help you get a job whether you use a recruitment business or not. And people started to buy it, started to do well on Amazon. Uh, Guardian Careers got in touch and uh, I ended up on their panel of experts, which all positioned our business as a thought leader in the recruitment and employment space. Something happened. A guy I interviewed came into my, well, came into my office and he was really down and despondent because he'd lost his job, he was on the job market. I spent about 45 minutes with him, gave him some advice based on what I'd written in my book. 12 months later, I'd forgotten about this guy. I had a phone call from him. He'd found his own job, and he phoned me up and he said, Simon, come and see me, please. I need to recruit. I'm thinking, fantastic, there's money on the table here. And I turned up with a, with a colleague of mine, her name was Mariel, and we turned up and we sat in his office. And he said to me, Simon, before we even get into the detail of the, jo of, of the job I need to recruit, I need to tell you why you're here. And he said, you're here because 12 months ago, you gave me some advice which really helped me. And I always said that when I needed to recruit, I would ask you to come back and recruit for me. Cost of acquiring that customer, 45 minutes of my time. He remembered me for 12 months. And my colleague Mariel sat next to me and her jaw dropped because that never, never, ever happened. And this started to happen over and over again. And it's because we dealt with the clients as candidates, not as clients, which was different to everybody else. Some of you may have seen the stand um, out there today for Nottingham Means Business. So in December 2013, I came into this organization, which was Invest in Nottingham Club, as chief executive. And Invest in Nottingham Club, now Nottingham Means Business, is a business-led organization that supports economic growth in Nottingham and attracting inward investment into Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. Now, really successful organization with lots of members. And when I, when I came in, I, I couldn't quite get a handle on the messaging needing to go out there and recruit new members, we needed to clarify who we were, what we did, and why it mattered. So I took the decision to rebrand the organization. And one of the reasons I took the decision to rebrand it was to give a clearer message to the business community. The other reason I decided to rebrand it is because people said, don't do it. And often when people say, don't do something, that's exactly what you should be doing. And people are still telling me six months on that you shouldn't have done it. And I turn around and say to them, well, do you know what? We have a clear message, inform, inspire, invest now. Sharing information, inspiring business people, and encouraging inward investment into Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. And those people who said, don't do it, well, we've increased our membership by 38% in 12 months. And I can tell you, in our organization, there are two of us who work part-time, myself and my colleague Natalie, here in the front row. Let's talk about action, finally. Talking shop, okay. So many people talk about doing something. They have an idea they're gonna do something. I've got loads of friends like this. You've probably got friends like this as well. And they say to me, do you know what, Simon? We see what you're doing, um, but yeah, I'm gonna do it. I've got a great idea, but I just need to pay the mortgage off. Or I'm just gonna get that bonus next month or next year or two years from now. And they never take action. They make excuses. It's tomorrow, not today. And you know, there's a... The people, if people watch this video who are not here today, they'll know who I'm talking about. And I have a couple of good friends that keep telling me, I've got this idea, I've got this idea. And in the space of time that we've been talking, and I've moved career and started four businesses and done lots of different stuff, they're still in the same job. So you can't just talk about it. You actually have to do it. Positive thinking. I don't believe in positive thinking. Not at all, because I think positive thinking, it might last for a couple of days, but it doesn't last very long at all. What's important is beliefs. So many people who come to me in my business career codex, where I help people move successfully in the job market, they come to me with the wrong beliefs. They come to me thinking that the way to get a job is to write a perfect CV. Or they come to me thinking that the way to get a job is to solely just, just register with recruitment companies to react to what's given to them. They believe that going to an employer direct is pestering. They believe that going to an employer direct is not something that they should be doing. So they take no action. Beliefs, thoughts, action. What I do is this, I say, well, you, you don't really understand how the job market works. Because if you did, you'd believe different things, you'd think differently, sustainable thinking, and you'd take different action. Anyone a member of the gym? 
Anyone? Okay. So what happens in January, February time, particularly January time? The gym gets busy. Gets really busy. I'm sick of it. I can't get on a treadmill when I go to the gym at night. So I'm just waiting till about March time when everyone that joined off the back of the marketing in December is going to leave and they're going to quit. Because action is all about daily diligent action. It's not about quick wins. It's never about quick wins. Because people go to the gym, they do a session, they get on the scales and they think, I've not lost weight. They come back, next day, do it again. I've, not, I've gained weight. So they give up, they quit, they make an excuse. It's dark tonight, it's cold tonight, I'm not losing weight, I'm going to stay home and have a glass of wine. So they quit before they find success. So what I've come to realize, and this is in the job market and in business, is having a plan is superbly important. And having a plan that leads to your destination, your goal, in a realistic time frame, and the time frame is really important, is what gets you to take that daily diligent action. Manageable bite-sized chunks. So when you go to the gym, the smart people in the gym are the ones that walk in before they get on the treadmill, they walk over to the box, they get their training plan out, and they know their job for that particular day is to follow that plan, and that's it. Six months, 12 months down the line, they'll have the muscle, they'll have lost the weight, and that's the difference. So in summary, three things that lead to success in the job market and in business. Observation, seeing what people are doing over here and going over here. Innovation, stepping out of yourself to generate new ideas, to innovate products, to do different things to what everybody else is doing. And action, massive action. Observe, innovate, and then take massive, massive action in the direction that you choose. That's where the magic happens.